Hello guys. So now we are starting chapter 5, which is about integration. So let's get started with section 5.2, which is about sigma notation and the limit of finite sums. Learning objectives are finite sums and the sigma notation, algebraic rules for finite sums, and finally we introduce Riemann sums. So let's get started. All right. So what is a sigma notation? So sigma notation is a compact way of writing uh, the sum, right? So let's say that I have a finite sum, a1 plus a2, etc., uh, until a n, and I can simply write it uh, in this uh, sigma notation, sum from k equal to 1 to n of a sub k. So more, more uh, specifically, this... Uh, why it's called sigma? Because this is uh, the sigma symbol coming from uh, Greek alphabet, and it stands for S, right? So it's sum. Uh, so the index starts from k equal to 1. It may start from different things, like k, k equal to 0, k equal to minus 1, etc. And uh, the, the, the top end that you see is uh, where index ends, and the a of k is, is uh, the term, right? The case term. So the the index k will be varying, right? So it's a sub k, so k is varying, as you can see above, a1, a2, a3, so k is a variable here. A few examples. Uh, the first one is k runs from 1 to 5 of k. So you let k equal to 1, k equal to 2, k equal to 3, k equal to 4, k equal to 5, and you sum them up, right? So the the left column shows the compact form, sigma notation form, and uh, the middle column shows what it uh, gives us, and uh, and then the right-hand column is the answer, right? If you sum 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you will get 15, okay? In, in the second one, uh, k runs from 1 to 3, so it only have three terms, minus 1 to the kk, right? Again, you let k equal to 1, 2, 3, so you, you get minus 1 to the power 1 plus uh, times 1 plus minus 1 squared, times 2, minus 1, cube 3. And if you sum them up, you'll get minus 2. And then we have k from 1 to 2, so only two terms, where k is runs from, okay, 1 to 2, so k over k plus 1, which is, uh, as you can see, it's 1 half, and uh, 2 thirds, which gives you uh, 7 over 6. And another example, where k runs from 4 to 5, you see the index change, right? So it's from 4 to 5, so only 4 and 5, only two terms. Uh, as you can see in the in the middle column, and the one, once you sum them up, the answer is 139 divided by 12. All right, uh, let's say that I want to express 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 in the sigma notation, right, in a much uh, more compact form. Well, for this, uh, we need to find sort of the formula that sort of gives this uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, well, these are odd numbers, and we know that odd numbers, for example, can be represented as 2k plus 1, right? Okay, so so then I can say, I can let uh, the sum of 2k plus 1s. But however, it needs to start from 1, right? And then it's 3, and then it's 5, and then it's 7, and then it's 9. So it needs to start 1, but for this to start 1, my k needs to be 0, right? If k is 0, then I will get 1. So here I do k from 0, and since I have 1, to, uh, the, the last one is 9, right? So 5 terms, the last one is 9. How do I get, when do I get line 9? If k is equal to 4, right? If k is 4, I get 2 times 4 plus 1, 9. So that's that's the summation. If you like, you can, you can also represent with uh, sort of different. For example, if I do 2k minus 1 here, this is also another way to represent odd numbers, but then I cannot let k zero because if you let k is zero it's because minus one but i have to start from one so i do k equal to one because at k equal to one this is perfectly fine and then i need to end uh, end at nine again so this is ends at nine if k is five right and so on and so forth i mean you, you can keep keep playing with this you can do like k let's say that you want to uh, start from from two right uh, then you need to end at six but what do you get here it's going to be like 2k uh, minus 3, right? Because if you let k equal to 2, you will get uh, 1. If you let k equal to 6, you get 9. 
So following our uh, algebraic rules for the sigma notation, so the sum of ak plus bk is the same as sum of uh, ak plus sum of bk. The difference also the same. The, the sum of the difference is difference of the sums. And if you multiply, constant multiply each ak, it's, it's like first summing up and then constant multiply. And the last one is if you add constant from 1 to n, it means you multiply uh, n by c, right? Because this is the last one is like c plus c plus etc. So there are n many, so it becomes n times c, right? So each one is uh, more or less easy. For example, uh, the third one is, uh, if, if you write uh, the third one here, it's c uh, a1, c a2, uh, c a a n. And you, all you have to do is just factor out uh, the C, then you will left with A1, etc., A N, and this A1 plus A N is exactly my sigma notation and so on and so forth. Okay, so these are easy properties. However, they simplify uh, lots of calculations. All right, so uh, let's try to uh, express the given uh, sum in in different form, right? Maybe in some sense a simpler form. So here I have minus 3k minus k square. So I could do uh, 3k minus the sum of k squares, right? Uh, where k runs from 1 to n, k runs from 1 to n, and uh, this is constant multiple, 3 times k, so I can also take out 3, then I will left with k from 1 to n of k, minus uh, k from 1 to n of k square, right? If I knew the formulas for the sum of uh, k's and k squares, uh, I could also find, uh, try, try to uh, find explicit number, right, the answer. Anyway, how about the second one? Well, I, I, this what is this minus ak. So it's like uh, I'm multiplying ak by negative 1, so I can pull, pull out the negative 1, right? So I can do like negative 1 times the sum k from 1 to n ak, right? Uh, for the third one, uh, I can write it as uh, k from 1 to 3 of k plus k from 1 to 3 of 4, well, uh, in fact, I could I could uh, also solve here, but uh, that's not important for now, but okay. The first one is from 1 to 3, so this is like 1 plus uh, 2 plus uh, 3, but the second one, I, ca I can do it uh, by, by the formula, right? By the, in, in the previous slide, the last formula, so it becomes 3 times the 4, right? So it's the 3 times the 4, and whatever the answer you get. Uh, another one, okay, uh, k from 1 to uh, n, so what can you do here? Well, for example, this n is constant. You remember k is the variable, but n is constant, right? n doesn't change, but k changes. But uh, here again, this is like a constant, right? So this is a constant, 1 over n is constant, hence by the last formula again, this simply becomes n times 1 over n, right? Because I'm summing 1 over n n many times, so it's n times 1 over n, so this is simply 1. Okay, let's try to show that sum of uh, k's where k runs from 1 to n, so in other words, uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 uh, up to n, this is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. So you can try to uh, do it uh, for several terms, like let n equal to 5, try to sum up, up from 1 to and see whether this formula is correct. But here it says we want to show it, so we would like to show the statement is correct. Okay, let's do the following. So let me let this uh, sum to be, let's say, call it s, right? So I want to find, I want to show that this s is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2, right? Uh, the usual method for these things are using mathematical induction. So if you know the mathematical induction, you can do. Uh, but here we'll do uh, uh, one interesting simple trick. So let me rewrite this statement uh, as is. But I can also rewrite uh, from right to left, right? So write n, and then here we get n minus 1, uh, and then we get n minus 2, etc., up to 1, right? Now, if I sum them up, I get 2s. On the on the right, what I can do is I can sort of uh, sum uh, sort of column by, by column if you like. Then what do I get? I get here n plus one, and then in the next term I again get n plus one, 
etc right the in the last term uh, here I get n here I get uh, 1 so this is again n plus 1 well how many times do I get n plus 1s I get n times right so this is n times the n plus 1 so then to find s, uh, remember, I, I want to find s. So to find s, s is n, n plus 1 divided by 2. So that's the uh, formula of summing uh, numbers from 1 to n. Uh, so there are other formulas, right, uh, for the first n squares. So it's uh, the sum of uh, k squares from 1 to n is n, n plus 1 to n plus 1 divided by 6. And uh, similarly, for the sum of uh, first uh, n cubes, it's n, n plus 1 over 2, everything is squared. So for, for interest, interested uh, students, uh, they can uh, try to do, to prove these statements. I think this is a good exercise uh, if you know mathematical induction. Riemann sum. Okay. Uh, Riemann sums are important uh, because in the next uh, section we will start introducing the definite integral and uh, we will give the relation between uh, Riemann sum and the definite integrals. So how do we uh, construct the Riemann sum? Well, what we do is we are given an interval a, b, and what I do is I uh, pick n minus 1 points in my interval a, b. Right. I pick uh, so I pick x1, x2, etc., uh, xn minus 1. Okay, and uh, I call a my x0, I call b my xn. So including a and b, I, I will get n plus 1 points. Right, so these points are called this the set of these points are called the partition. Why it's called partition because these intervals will be splitting. Uh, this a a b into n small sub intervals right n small sub intervals what are these uh, sub intervals so the first one is uh, x0 x1 the second one is x1 x2 uh, etc so the kth sub interval is starts from xk minus 1 to xk and so on and so forth so there are uh, n of them right there are n of them and then uh, I, I, I write this notation delta x, this triangle means the delta x1 for the, the length, for the length of the first subintervals. So the first interval is uh, called delta x1. So what is it? Uh, here this is going to be uh, x1 minus x0, right? And delta x2, this is the length of the second, which is x2 minus x1, etc. So the general formula for Delta xk, this is the length of the k subinterval, is uh, xk minus xk minus 1. Okay? And then, uh, when all the subintervals equal, so you remember when I selected this x1, x2, x n minus 1, I, I, I haven't told you that they, they must be. Uh, sort of equally spaced, right? They they should be equally distributed. I haven't said that. So, but if they are equally distributed, in other words, if all the subintervals have equal length, you remember how many intervals do we have? We have n intervals. So, which means each interval will have uh, b minus a is the total length of the interval a b. You divide by n because I have n equal intervals. So, in this case, delta x is going to be simply b minus a over n, right? However, for general Riemann sum. I don't want to uh, say that all the intervals are uh, of equal size. Okay, so we, we uh, considered uh, the partitions, right? And we, we know how to calculate uh, the, the, the length, I mean the notation delta xi's. Now, what is the next step in constructing the Riemann sum? The next step is you pick uh, arbitrary points. So C1 is from, from the first interval. C2 from the second interval, etc. So CK is any any point. So I'm not saying that it's the midpoint, anything. No, it can be sort of any point. It also can be the endpoints if if you like, right? Uh, and then for the given CK, uh, I have my f, right? This height, 
this height this is my f of uh, ck right and here again for, for example c2 uh, it's given right here so f of c2 here i don't want to call this height because this is uh, from fixed geometry this is negative uh, but if you take up well it becomes the height of this uh, uh, line segment right and then the Riemann sum is defined to be for the given partition right it de again it depends on partition on depends on ck etc so it's the sum of k from 1 to n of f of ck delta xk okay so that's the Riemann sum you can you can pause and see what is it doing for example if f is positive right like like in this case if f is positive what this is doing is this is like a height right you're sort of multiplying the height and this is like the the width right it's the it's the length of this uh, sub interval so you multiply height by width this is going to give you the area of this particular rectangle right it's it's going to give you the area of this rectangle but be careful this is if the uh, the function is positive if the function is negative it's going to give me the negative of the area all right uh, let's do a very simple example let's say that my my function f of x is equal to x square and my interval is let's say i am interested from one to uh, three so this is parabola etc right okay uh, let's say that uh, I, I pick my partition to be one uh, 1.5 maybe 2 and uh, 2.5 and 3 so I, i'm sort of picking an uh, uh, a partition that are equally uh, length but uh, that's not uh, important right that's not important uh, so let's see uh, my intervals here's one here's three uh, 1.5 uh, two here 2.5 so how many intervals do i have i have four intervals right okay uh, now what is next next we pick uh, ci's right so from here for example i can pick one i can pick so my c1 is to be uh, one right so this is point one in here i can pick i don't know maybe like 1.7 right in in here i can pick uh, 2.1 here i can pick 2.6 for example right so i pick four points and so then for this particular partition uh, for these particular ci's the, the the riemann sum is going to be so because i have the four intervals this is going to be n from one to four or i from one to four whatever uh, and here it's going to be f of uh, cn times del uh, del delta x n right uh, but what is the length again so i i sort of uh, equally spaced so delta x here it is one this is going to be a 0.5 in fact you see that each one is 0.5 right so delta x in general uh, is uh, point, uh, point 0.5 and then you can also calculate c case but anyway so this is uh, n from one to four uh, f of c uh, n times 0 0.5 if you want to write it out uh well what is okay yeah i can also do uh here x square so i can also write uh, it in the form n from one to uh, four uh, so f is so this is c n squared times 0 0.5 so if you want i can take out 0 0.5 and then what do i get so for n equal to one it's uh, one right so this is one squared and then uh, c2 is 1.7 squared and then uh, the next one is 2.1 squared and finally i have 2.6 squared so that's the the riemann sum for this particular partition uh, with the given cn's